We have been a part of a lot of campaigns in our many years upon this earth, okay? Now, some of them have been awesome, killer campaigns. All the ones I run are obviously that. Divine. Divine. Thank no you. Flaw. Thank you. Keep... Uh, we, I, I feel it. No Keep need going. for retrospectives yes. on any of your campaigns no. ever, right? No. I don't do anything wrong, okay? <laughs> Start with that. But there have been some campaigns that... That I've run. You've run that have been just abysmal. <laughs> I'm just kidding. That begs the question, I guess. And this has been a question that has been going around for years in the D&D community. Is no D&D better than bad D&D? Yeah, that's a hard question because I think uh, we were kind of talking about this a little bit earlier. Um, but I think that having there there's categories to this okay. you know is it is it a new dm trying to you know make their way into the dm world and therefore it's more of a, a railroaded thing because it's easier for them you know and they're just trying to learn things and so is, is that what we're talking about or is it more of you know the malicious dm that's literally just there to like not make the game fun that's um question if that's the case i think yeah unless and i don't know maybe we should talk about how the yeah well let's do that whole let's, fit. let's define that what is well, let's define bad D D at that point then right because to me and maybe i mean in my head this is what it is it bad D D would be D D that does not meet your expectations right as a yeah. player or even as a dm dming four players i think that when you come together as a table um or a virtual tabletop whatever you might be whatever platform you're on i think that you are all agreeing to some sort of terms and conditions if you will right of like generally the dm has outlined okay this is the type of campaign i want to run you know if and and this could be a variety of things it could be an actual full-blown module it could be his own homebrew thing whatever it might be and i think that everybody comes with with expectations and uh and an agreement that okay we're all gonna play D D. and so i think that when those expectations are missed or when they um, don't align properly is when things start to go wrong yeah, I guess that's a good point. You could look at it from the other direction too. If you're a DM and you've created, you know, this this great campaign or module and you've got a bunch of players that kind of show up, they're, you know, they're constantly on their phone. Yeah, they're totally. you you almost feel like you're playing their characters to kind of push them along cuz they're just not doing anything. That's kind of yeah. That that either should be talked about or or canceled. Similarly, if your player's coming to a, a game where you have all these expectations, you know, you've got your cult character backstory and everything, and the DM is always ill-prepared, never seems to have anything ready, or is running the campaign for you despite your initiative to, you know, be your own character, once again, that needs to be talked about or canceled. Because in my eyes, I, I, I didn't come to play D, D to watch you as the dm make my decisions for me i don't understand why i'm here and so yeah right. those are those are some things those are probably extremes but they definitely fall in the realm in my eyes as like the biggest yeah we should probably just either find different groups or you know just stop or figure something else out right yeah no that's that's a good point i like that you you know the flip side of that too because if all your players are on their phones and as a dm you show up prepared you spend all this time like and nobody's engaging or or playing could be like an issue of yours obviously right like maybe right. you have a lot of work to do and you like need to be a little more engaging and things like that like i would say definitely obviously like think about that before you just start blaming people but um the that, I, I like that because it brings up a good aspect, right? Because most DMs come 
to the table with some sort of rules. Like they have their table rules. Like, all right, everyone's going to put their phones away. Uh, we're going to bring snacks. You know, um, we're going to be respectful at the table. Whatever your rules might be that you have set up. So the players have some sort of expectation of like, okay, these are like, we can abide by these rules. But I do like, and I actually was in a campaign um, recently and the DM sat everybody down. This was session zero probably for everybody. And he just said, okay, I want to know what your pet peeves are for DMs. Like, what do you not like when to happen from a DM, if that makes sense? So like, you know, um, like railroading, like heavy railroading of life, or like, you know, puppeteering my character, things like that. Uh, like, like you said, you're not there to watch the DM play your character, right? That That's a pet peeve right. of yours. That's something that you don't like. And so it's almost as if the players, um, I think it's good as a DM to be able to kind of, you know, after you've given your rules, maybe get the rules from the players so that you can also try to meet their expectations of, you know, um, like, we don't like railroading. We don't like when the DM is just out to kill us every single session. You know, we right. don't like this or that and things like that. Because every group is different. And so it might actually be fun for some groups to, you know, they want to just get in a full-blown fight with the DM every single time. And it's like a fight to the death of like who can beat each other. And that's totally fine. Like that's the beauty of D&D is that you can have that variety. But I think that... Um, I think that the the bad D and D comes from when you know maybe the DM comes, he lays out his rules, and then could care less about what the players have to think, um, and or vice versa. The players are like, ah, oh, well, I'm not going to abide by this DM's rules, or, you know, whatever it might be. And that's where that dissonance comes and and can just quickly destroy your games. I think. Yeah, and it could be interplayer issues too. You know, that's you have true. that one. And I'm a I'm a list of trope here that's kind of uh, oldie but a goodie, of the rogue character that just shows up to the table to steal all the other player stuff, and it just gets annoying to where nobody wants to come because. But it doesn't Riley, really get. it's what and my character would I, do. It, yeah. I think it all boils down to what you just said of sitting down session zero before the campaign begins and being like, okay, look, these are the expectations of what we're looking at doing. These are the things we don't want to, you know, accomplish. And these are the things that we're going to look forward to. Um, I mean, I, I think that's the one thing I do. Um, I've never actually asked about pet peeves. That's a good one. Um, but something I do is I usually sit everyone down before the campaign begins to say, you know, here's the premise of the campaign. What is it that you individually are looking to get out of? It's probably more of a character development thing at this point. But you as a player, like you, Christian, you coming to the campaign with your barbarian, what is it that you're looking to get out of both for yourself to have fun and for your character, you know, to progress throughout this campaign? It's like, well, I'm, I'm really looking. I just want to smash things. It's like, sweet. That's not hard to do. I'll throw some minions in front of you. You can just cut them down all day, you know? And so, or like, you know, that's, I just don't want all my yeah. stuff stolen. I want, you know, fairness across the table. So maybe you need to be a little bit more attentive to how the players are interacting with each other to kind of help that out. And so that's the only thing that I've really done. Um, but I do agree. I think it has to do with the table as a whole. It can boil down to the blame of one person but ultimately it kind of falls back on, did you discuss this as a group? And are you all in agreement that, yeah, this was not the conduct that we agreed on. We either need to fix it or we need to move on with something else. Yeah, totally. So then, you know, okay, so we've kind of defined bad D&D &D and, you know, what maybe cause, causes it. Um, so then coming back to that question then, is no D&D... &D better than in bad D &D. bad D, D. what do you think yeah if if it can't be fixed or unwilling to be fixed i think so um as much as i love D, &D i would much rather spend my seven hours when <laughs> we play that doing something more productive than sitting here being frustrated with my friends because they aren't listening to me or because you know they're not taking my set you know whatever and i don't want to really ruin that relationship with them off of the the pretense that 
you know, we didn't talk before we, we went through that. Totally. Yeah, I, I agree with that. Um, I think that I would probably say the same, right? I mean, it's it, as you get older and you get more and more responsibilities, D and D becomes a much more difficult thing. It becomes much more of like a sacrifice that you have to you have to make a lot more sacrifices precious. to be able to play it, right? Yeah. Yeah. And so you know, it's difficult to have to set apart all that time, and if you come out of it with a bad time, you know, then like mm -hmm. that's just it's it it's, it's terrible and you don't you don't feel fulfilled and then you're looking at like oh well, yeah I'm not going to be able to make it next session you know because you didn't enjoy it whatever it might be um that being said though I think that you got to be careful to and again this is uh, this is why you need to align your expectations it's like if this is a brand new dm and you're playing a module you got to switch your expectations. You can't go in there thinking that, you know, that, uh, that Brennan Lee Mulligan is going to be running your campaign, right? And you can do anything you want and, and he's going to react to it and, and wrap it into this amazing storyline with everything. Like you can't go in there with those expectations because you're going to be sorely disappointed and then it's going to turn into bad D and D for you. Right. Yeah. And so I think that like reframing your expectations, but also, what you brought up is like if someone's not willing to meet those expectations or change their expectations, then that might be someone that doesn't fit in with the group, maybe needs to go and is causing right. that D and D to be bad. So I would, I would agree with you. I think no D and D is better than bad D and D because there's a lot of other things you can do with eight hours of time. That's a whole work day. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And if you've, if you've, I'm, I'm assuming that we've passed the point of, discussing it with, with the group and it's not going to get resolved so now it is considered bad D, &D. i would say it's it's no D, D is better than than bad D, D, which is unfortunate because man i do i thoroughly enjoy this game this is a super fun game it pulls you kind of out of reality into a fantasy world that you and your friends designed and you know are reading this book together effectively creating this this life and this world bringing life to something that you know maybe you can't quite fulfill in your day-to-day -day. and so when that's ruined it kind of it's like having people step on your hopes and dreams and so it kind of <laughs> sucks so it sucks totally sucks maybe so there I'm you go too into this game <laughs> yes we love it we love it it's awesome so there you go um i guess our advice not that this is even an, a video for advice but yeah. Try to um, set your expectations properly, but then also, you know, if you're a DM, try to set your players' expectations properly and try to meet those player expectations as well, right? What what they're looking for. It's great to talk to your players beforehand, um, whether that's about the campaign or just the table itself and and everything. We've got an amazing group. We were we've been friends for a long time. I yeah. love the uh, the unity we have with everything, like everyone lets each other shine we don't step on each other's toes and it's it's great so um try to find yourself a group like that because you'll just you'll love D, D. it's it's awesome yeah i don't think we've really had a bad D, D experience to the point where it's not you know usually i think it's something that we can always talk about if you know there's improvement that's needed and 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 so that's that makes for a great group because you will ideally always have the ability to play D D because whatever pitfalls you run into you're able to overcome and build a bridge and get over it let us know your thoughts you know comments let's discuss it um maybe there's a point that we're not thinking of you know as we're going through Could this be. we're only two people um but some extra experiences might be of value this is a learning area yeah that's a good point what are your experiences what are your thoughts let us know and we'll try our best not to fight with you in the comments, but well, let's discuss. Can't it, promise. Maybe. Can't <laughs> promise. Just kidding. <laughs> All right. Well, we'll catch you next time. Barn barrel. Barn barrel.